I'm just going to play the next round in complete silence. Because I think doing commentary is too distracting. Although I couldn't, I could just win the next round because of the fact that I've practiced several rounds now. But it might be because I'm just not talking. And this will be an age-old testament. If I win by not talking, then this will be a great example of how doing commentary makes you shitter, shittier at video games. And so on. <laughs> no! Okay, maybe it's not a great example. I haven't lost a real round yet. I lose these constantly, and now that I'm on heightened difficulty, I'm losing them even harder. But I think that I'll get a- I might get a, a higher rank reward for doing it on heightened. I'm not really sure. That didn't hit him? Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. They're, they're constantly trying to get me with that. Come here. No, I didn't jump in time. Uh, I think this game does time dilation that really screws with me. I think time takes different amounts of time from moment to moment. <laughs> and that's really screwing with my ability to play the game. Wait, I got you. Oh. No. What happened? Holy crap. I... Just go, 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 go! Yes! Ah! A little more of that, come on. I lose in one more go, I think. That's not what I wanted to do at all. Oh my god, I made it. <laughs> Ah, oh, how did I make that? What? Oh, I thought I was out of the way, no! How? I don't... Oh, God, I can't process. I win, right? I won? We're good? We're good? Oh, thank god. 
Oh my god. Ugh. Like, it's not the most intelligent, like, impossible, super intelligent, like, it's not a genius AI, necessarily. But because it's a computer, it can pull off some ridiculously fast maneuvers that I can't process. Like, retroactively, I can look back and I'm like, Okay, so I guess that guy ran towards the goal, but then threw the ball to his ally, so that then I would be not being able to... It's even actually it's it's hard to recap even what's happening in some of those moments. Like I approach the I try to defend my base, but then the guy throws his ball to his ally, so he instantly regains his aura, so that he can instantly kill me in my own base to then receive the ball again to score the ball, and that all happens in a half a second. I'm like, oh fuck! <laughs> the game's never ever pulled stuff that tough though in the actual campaign. It's only in these challenges where I'm like, oh my god. Izo is excited to have completed Sandra's challenge and awaits her approval. A worthwhile effort, Imp. Your performance is sufficient and you passed my test. Your predecessor may well have approved. Thus, congratulations are in order. To you and to your lovely reader. Now farewell. Ooh. Achievement unlocked. Sandra's favorite. I wonder what that's for. How's that reward looking? Tizo is happy to be back and wonders what it is that Sandra granted you. You take a closer look at the new artifact in your possession. It's Haub's wing. Oh, it's only level 7. Oh, last time it was level 20. I thought that meant... I, I don't know what determines the levels then. Tizo's flutter and zip abilities cost less stamina than usual. 35%. So it looks like it goes by another 5% per rank, judging by that's level 7, 35, and so on. So his movement costs less stamina, that means he can do more, which is kind of a big deal, because my biggest limitation in that in that round was how little he could actually move, because would, he would keep running out. Even the sisters were taken aback, faced with such a sheer ferocity from one with such a small stature. Put that down with the other ones, I suppose. There we go. Our character specific upgrades. Things get so scattered somehow. Oops. Oh, D-pad changes pages. Weird. I was thinking it'd move around on the grid. That's what this is missing, is a nice little grid. Is you don't you don't you don't move around on a the grid. They're just or they just uh, self-organize along a grid. But Tizo didn't get any experience from that, did he? That's too bad that rights don't give you experience too along the way. Might as well make you next rank three next, Pamitha. Unless I want to go for something else. Let's explore the cold moat. You spend a quiet afternoon in the darkest corners of cold moat, surveying the area with some of your companions. Hail, noble Tizo! What tidings? Tizo seems convinced that the surrounding area is safe and secure for now. Your investigation yields nothing of a note, and the three of you return to the wagon for the remainder of the day, where you should have time to pursue your vocations. Alright, so do I want global bonuses, or do I want to mentor our companion? I think I want to mentor our companion. I've grown fond of this option. Let's try to get you to rank three. Why, certainly, reader darling. How good of you to ask. You and Pamitha spend some time reviewing some of the specific aspects of the rites, such as the properties of the aura. You sense she gained something from it. All in all, having to unlearn everything I've learned is going somewhat faster than expected. We want to go down here, right? Because gets, she gets major bonuses to her character. While casting her aura... Pamatha can trigger an aura blast that banishes nearby adversaries, or Pamatha is banished. If Pamatha is banished while Winged Fury's effect is active, she returns twice as quickly as normal. Which is something that happens if she banish if she banishes somebody else. So if she banishes somebody else for five seconds, she'll return fast faster, which is good. I think I want that, yeah. So that, that's just general usefulness, because I get I get taken down a lot. I hadn't thought of it quite that way, reader darling. Many of her sisters pursued Trieste to the downside, but eventually they all concluded that the saint was gone. 
only one way forward, unless there's not. Being here in flagging hands continues to sap most everyone's spirits. Again? Poor Hope. But the Pit of Millith is the location of the next right, where we're gonna deal with this guy again. Or not? What are you, you nightmare? Here in the fetid swamps of flagging hands, you encounter a messenger imp come to deliver news and rumors from the other side. The news this time pertains to Hedwin, whom you liberated at the fall of Solium. You learn Hedwin returned safely to the Commonwealth, where he was clothed and welcomed, his past transgressions all forgiven. He was to be groomed for a leadership position of his choice, whether on the Council or the Blood Border, each equally as lucrative and secretive as well. However, he refused, and before the stunned council members could do anything about it, he left them. He has since made contact with Volfred's agents, and together, and, working, and is working together with, the, with them. Thus, the ranks of the revolution go stronger. Per the messenger imp custom, the last part of the message was transcribed for, with, uh, from Hedwin, word for word, and says, Keep going. I'll see you here. Oh, that's interesting. So he refused their, he refused what they wanted to give him, and then and then met up with the with the revolutionaries, which just makes me wonder like, will some of these characters not, like what if some of these characters are unwilling to refuse the reward and meet up with the revolutionaries? There might be some characters that actually aren't good for the revolution. You thank the messenger imp for relaying this information. Soon your companions all are all abuzz about it. Wonder if he'll ever find the one he fell for. Yeah, that's how it's done, Hedwin. Right behind you, chum. A glorious example Hedwin sets for all of us. I always thought Hedwin was looking for someone. Out there back home? Do you think he found her? He did it. Izo is happy to hear Hedwin is, is well back in the Commonwealth. The news of Hedwin's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with a newfound resolve. You gain plus one hope, counteracting the effect of all this nonsense. And also, I have a plus two across the party, too. So we have an overall net net of plus one instead of minus two. Oh, more. The Pit of Millith and the Scribe's Deeds. Let's stop by the store first, maybe. Uh, hey, you guys. Always nice to see some more customers, because, you know, I don't always get too much around here. And sometimes it gets kind of lonely here, I guess. That's a plus four. Too expensive. Burning promise. After dousing the adversary's pyre, the bearer earns a reward up to three times of plus five. Ooh. Another type of reward separate from the contract itself. And the bonus is nice. Give you a nice Tizo multiplier. Or something to, to increase the amount that you sap from your opponent, for example. Or At this point, we want uh, Ash and Coal. We probably want Ash and Coal to become more powerful, too, so we can increase our starting bonus. Because it kind of sucks right now. I think things are getting harder now to a point that I don't, I don't think I'm going to use this any, ever again. The plus one. It's just kind of slow. I'm going to go for you instead. There we go. That's how you get a repeat customer there, Dad. You give him a deal. Always instructing his dad, seemingly? I think I want to make yours tougher. How much will this get to? Plus 10? Only plus 10. So wait, so they do cap out at 20. Look at that. But then when that other thing was above... Was that something I had or something else? I think it was the opponent had like a 35. Like, they straight up had an item I can't get unless only some items can get that high. Confusing. And you have the Curve Fang. Plus 6 damage to the enemy. Take it to plus 8. That's pretty good. Let's go for that. There we go. Yeah, these are my favorites right now. Life Leech and Increased Damage to Your Opponent are pretty nice. You've got this one, because it's only for you. Yeah. I might as well keep these ones equipped and then swap them on the fly when I choose to. 
So, so I don't keep track of... I don't lose track of who has them. The progression seems to suggest that maybe this game's shorter than I thought then, because right now I have four characters that all have... They all have their own spe specific items right now. Only two remain. There's only two characters that still need to do their rights. But we know that at least one new character needs to join. Possibly two? Because we don't have a sap and we don't have a bog crone. So that means that... I have these, we have these four characters, then one other, so I have five successful rights so far. I mean, or trials, or whatever. I've done five of the tests, and I presumably have four to go, because there's these two characters, and I still need to get a bog and a bog crone and a sap if we're continuing this supposed promise of getting every mask filled, which seems to be intended still, I think. We got two new pages, right? The Scribe's Deeds. This is Golgothanian again. We're back in chapter one. What's the previous page? Eight scribes. Yeah, that was we had that one before. I wish to re be remembered not for boastfulness. Thus, I refrain from detailing our exploits across the land, save to say that they were numerous. Know that only through our combined strength of arms and wit did we withstand this savage land. Such were the monstrous dangers that it posed. I came to see that all the tremors which I heard at bedside in my youth were based entirely in fact. So great were they, they blotted out the sky. Such was the evil that we vanquished, that the remnants of it yet shine under the stars, and in the end, it was the stars which guided us towards our truest calling. The Pit of Milith, from Loose Glory and Hundred Mines, if there is one celestial landmark in which I would never again wish to tread, unless, of course, the stars beseeched me to, it has to be the pit. It was dark in there beyond all reckoning, if not for Milith's sorcerous lantern. All of us. We all would have been lost. What lies within the pit is not to be invoked, although I have no doubt our goodly underking shall be unable to prevent himself from boasting of how Milith is uh, sealed it there for an entire age. The thing yet lies there, on the edge of death. Through its connection to the stars, it gives the pit significance. Walk there with courage and a steady mind. Well then, I believe it's time for a trial, isn't it? What's this down here? Flagging fungus occasionally produces foul-tasting mushrooms that are strangely satisfying to pluck from it. Flagging hands. Kind of found your way in here, huh? This, pl this is getting to be a very dense, busy screen full of all sorts of strange items. Let, let us commence the rite. As the sky grows dark over the pit of millet, a hush falls over your companions, especially Ruki. You sense something troubling him. Something to do with your next adversaries. Oh, hey chum. Just wanted to let you know I'm pumped and ready to take on the distance this time. Sure am, alright. That Barker, he's not so scary once you you get to know him like I do, you know? So, don't you worry. Because I sure won't be going easy on him after last time. As Rookie marches off towards the clearing, you notice his grin fade away. In the distance, you hear the dissidents begin to hoot and howl. The hyena laugh. <laughs> Alright, one way or another, I have to accept the, the result of whatever happens. This is no longer a trial where I can keep trying it. So hopefully I practice nice and, nice and good. <laughs> and we can take this down. Look forth, you exiles of the Nightwings. You are returned once more unto the pit of Melith. Your adversaries in the coming right shall be the dissidents. Whose ever pyre yet burns ere the break of dawn shall surge forward on the path to glory. Now prepare yourselves. Oh, mates, look at what we have here. Green tails, that you? Uh, yeah. Barker, it's me, all right? Well, I'll be. So, tell me something then, Greentail. You gonna go against me this time, or you keep on being a stinking coward like before, huh? Uh, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? Wait, wait. 
He says he wants to fight. If you can beat him, if you can beat him, maybe... Maybe he'll leave us alone. He'll leave the Green Tails alone. I can make it worth his while. Uh, Barker? What is it, mate? The ride's about to start. Well, I was just thinking, I know I owe you and everything, but I've got a deal for you. You like a good deal, don't you? Ah, like a good laugh. I like a good laugh's more like it, but I'll buy Green Tail. What's your fancy here? I was thinking, if I can beat you here, we're squared away. You let me off the hook. Huh, I see, I see. But, tell me something, mate. Now, why in this stinking world would I want to do a thing like that? What's in it for me when I beat you instead? Then, I'll pay you double what I owe. I promise. But you have to promise too, curse oath. Oh, really now? Double or nothing then, is it, eh? You drive a hard bargain there, mate, but alright, it's a deal. You beat me in my pack right here, right now, and you're debt-free as far as I'm concerned. Of course, if you don't, you'll be... I'll be fleecing you for all it's worth. You, your stupid uncles, and that dear old mom of yours. See you shortly, then. Rookie turns to you. Hey, so... This one means a lot to me, understand, here, there, chum? Let me go against these guys, and I'll make sure we show them up, okay? Oh, God. <laughs> this game's gonna give me... This game's making me like these characters. Uh, this game's this game's making me like these characters, and that's gonna turn around and give me like constant anxiety over every goddamn match I play. Is what's gonna happen? Because every single round, not only do I have to worry about the fate of all these characters and whether or not they get to escape this place, but now like other things are going on the stakes. Like they hinted at that before with uh, Tizo, like oh, Tizo has a personal stake in this round a little bit, but now it's like Rookie's like making bets, and it's like oh god. All right, Scribe Rock, plus 12 presence. So that's why he's got like a gargantuan bubble around him. Keen eye, oh God. So he can double jump and he has a 50% further aura on top of having a gargantuan presence. So he can just shoot his this huge bubble around. So he's like, that's like the antithesis of how his, the, his team is generally supposed to work. Wait, what? Oh, I can look at this team of characters that aren't in the right right now. Weird. They're Scarly and Walfy. They've got... After plunging into the pyre, the bearer has a chance to avoid banishment. 85%? Oh, no. So they're always going to have three people, basically. That's rough. And they all have the longer, the longer distance and double jump. Oh, God. Okay. You can feel the... You can look at the view... Per, the full bio. So... You have a bio. Barker. He's a troublemaking cur who thrills in the defeat of his triumvirates who stand against him. He was an accomplished hunter, and the people of Commonwealth did, uh, did have an appetite. This is the same dialogue as before? Yeah, I think it's the same dialogue as before. <laughs> You're at, his crime is indecency. He has violated one of the Commonwealth's most sacred landmarks, and his, his uh, motive is anarchy. He, the record state he did what he did to undermine the common respect for our country. And he's been here for four years. Boy, oh boy. He's a hunter. Which we basically already knew. The Alpha Chiefs, uh, oops. While few traditions survived from the days of the Empire, hunting was certainly an exception. He's from Sagathol. Born on the 12th of, of the 12th moon, suggesting he's carefree and spirited. His astral sign often foretells of one's disposition, strength, and idios idiosyncrasies. So he is... He's got a gargantuan aura with long range, and they all kind of have that, but he specifically has extra presence, so his aura is more bigger -er than all the other bigger -er auras. So great. That gets me into some trouble. The characters who can turn invincible to attack are probably going to be the go-to characters in this situation. So while it's tempting to use Tizo... And he can get around for cheaper now. They're probably going to keep intercepting him because they're fast characters, because they're curs. And Tizo doesn't have a huge presence. 17. Pamatha and Sir Gillian, or Sir Gilmum seem like the go-to choices because uh, Pamatha can do a charge through enemies' attacks that makes her invincible while she does it. And uh, Sir Gilman can uh, do that thing where he attacks where his tail was, which means that he can like also do an attack 
where they launch around and be invincible. Meanwhile, Rukia, of course I need to use. We can try this, sure. So your quickness is 18, 25. You guys are weirdly fast, aren't you? Okay. Your quickness is not amazing, necessarily. Let's bring Rookie. Rookie. Alright. This is the... This is the life leech and this is the bonus damage. Who should I give them to? I guess it mathematically doesn't make a huge difference. It's all, it's all about the gap between your team and the enemy's team as far as what current life points goes. Plus nine and minus, eight, like plus nine for us and minus eight for, for them are like almost the same effect ultimately. Good luck us. All right, Rookie, this one's for you, I guess. All right then, Greentail, bring it on. Or it's your dear old mum who's gonna pay. That's just not nice. It's just not nice. Now begin. Jeez, they're spammy. <laughs> it's just they're just spamming back and forth at the moment. Oh crap. Fell for that. Fell for that, didn't I? Come on over. Take a quick look, little look, huh? What? That got me? Crap. My bad. My bad. Oh, that's bad, too. Bye, everyone. Oh, didn't make it. Wow, they're fast. They are really fast. Oh. Poor baby Rookie. This aura is so tiny. There's a so gargantuan. Ow, that was just... That was me going so fast I lost control of my character, basically. There we go. Best not get overconfident, Nightwings. Ah, that's bad. Oh, that's really bad. That's really bad. No. No. Uh-oh. What's the matter, Greentail? Methinks you seem a little nervous on your paws out there. Just shut up already, Barker. Let's get this over with. What's that you say, huh? You think you can talk back to me like that, Greentail? You heard me, Barker. Stay out of my damn way. Or what, mate? Or I'll sink these little nervous teeth into your neck, old chum. Oh, Jesus, Rookie. Rookie mad. Rookie mad. Oh, Jesus. Woo. Rookie. Oh, that was a good jump time. Okay. Do you believe you can prevail? That was just not the right move at all. Oh, I lost control of him again. No. Damn it. Damn it. You seem unable to stop these. Okay. The worm's so fast I lose track of him when I don't mean to, which is a problem. Oh my god, Rookie. How does that keep working? <laughs> MVP Rookie. I am really bad at playing as Pamatha, is the takeaway, really. Nope. Time to go, Gilman. Nope, I just- I did it again! I just- I just charge in and die. No! Alright. The two flames now burn equally as bright. No, Rookie. Rook oh my god, Gilman is like infinitely fast. How is Gilman that fast? <laughs> can't play as Gilman because he's so fast. It's terrifying. How do you control that character? Nope. Oh, I couldn't jump anymore. Whoops. I tried to jump and I couldn't. No, Rookie, no, that was a bad time. Whew. Hey. 
Oh, that was right there. Do, 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 do. No, how did how'd that happen? No. That's bad. That's really bad. <laughs> okay. Do, 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 do. This theme song. Out of control. Nope. Bad call. Bad call. Bad call. Ran out of stamina. I'm going at it again. Yes! Oh, Rookie, you badass. <laughs> now, end the ceremony. Oh man, using this character was a terrible idea. Dropped. That's bad. Yep, there it goes. Whew. Rookie, I need you back right now. Oh, I really wish you were back. That's- oh, that was a bad call. I just- I didn't mean to do that at all. Wow, they're just spamming over there. Oh, man. Don't screw it up. All three of them at once? Really? Yes! Get in there. There you go, Rookie. <laughs> the Nightwings prevail again. <laughs> they brushed aside their adversaries without too much trouble. This game became more stressful than Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. <laughs> it's complete. Woohoo! We did it! We got him! Ah. Green tail, you. You got us fair and square, mate. As fair and square as this stuff gets, right? Mm. Uh, so my family, you... You'll leave alone. You said you leave them alone. Ease off there, Greentail. A deal's a deal's a deal. Now then, me and my pack had better step it up for when we see you and your mates again. I'll be looking forward. Rookie watches them him depart, then turns to you as expression softens. Don't know what to tell you, chum, other than I really owe you. We there is much nailed it. From this experience. Holy crap. I don't want to fail Rookie. <laughs> to give you these characters, I'm afraid of failing now. I'm like, no, this is not... This is storytelling anxiety I haven't been ready for. This is like... I think last time I felt anxious about characters this way was my blind playthrough of Walking Dead Season 1. Until the next bright. And that wasn't even a Liberation Rite, that was just a bet about, like, I mean, well, almost as worse than Liberation Rite, it's the, the fate of their entire family.